in this video we will talk about amnesia from a neurocognitive perspective. Let's start with looking at the brain and the structures that are usually damaged in amnesia. Mainly the structures in the medial temporal lobe are damaged. First we have the hippocampus, thalamus, mammillary body, phonics and finally the frontal lobe. The main type of memory that is affected by amnesia is the episodic memory. Amnesiac patients are impaired on tests for events related to their own lives, so autobiographical memory and other types of episodic memory. Welsh's memory scale and autobiographical memory interview are some of the tests that can be performed if um, amnesia is suspected. Unlike in movies like Memento or Bond series, amnesia isn't clear retrograde or anterograde in clinical situation. For people who don't know the movies, Memento is a Christopher Nolan movie where the main character Lynette suffers from pure anterograde memory loss. So he remembers everything before his brain injury, but he would make notes, take pictures and get tattoos to remember what has been happening since his brain injury. It's a great movie by the way, really worth the watch if you haven't watched it yet. Jason Bourne on the other hand suffers from pure retrograde memory loss. He doesn't remember anything before his brain injury, but he's able to memorize things that happen after. In clinical amnesia presentation, there is usually an overlap between retrograde and anterograde. The pattern of pure amnesia is sometimes seen in psychiatric illnesses, so amnesia after a mental breakdown. Moving on to semantic memory, at first sight, amnesic patients appear to retain their knowledge of language and the world. This was initially taken as evidence that semantic memory is bad. However, a more complex picture has emerged over the years. One critical issue is the age at which the information was attained. More semantic knowledge is attained within the first few years of life. Episodic memory on the other hand develops later and is attained throughout the lifespan. So given that amnesia tends to preserve relatively older memories, the question is, could the apparent sparing of semantic knowledge reflect its early attainment? There have been some studies done and the result does show some impairment to semantic memories, especially after focal hippocampal lesions. But semantic memories are often less vulnerable compared to episodic memory. Also, in some cases, new semantic memories can be formed by repetition learning. Finally, we have memory types such as the short-term memory, procedural memory, perceptual priming, and they are generally spared in amnesia. So according to the researchers, amnesia is mainly a deficit of declarative memory. 